Good morning. My name is State Albier Conference Operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the America Mobile Second Quarter 2021 Conference Call and Webcast. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star, followed by the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw a question, press the pound key. Thank you. Now, I will turn the call over to Ms. Daniela Liquana, the Head of Investor Relations. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're here to discuss our second quarter financial and operating results. We have uh, on the line Mr. Daniel Haas, CEO, Mr. Carlos Garcia Moreno, CFO, and Mr. Oscar Bunhauske, CEO. Uh, thanks, Daniela. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being in the call. Carlos is going to make a summary of the results. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Good morning, everyone. Well, uh, the U.S. economy recovered rapidly. Signs of high inflation towards the latter part of the second quarter created uncertainty and confusion and drove price corrections in some segments of the financial markets. The yield on three-year treasury notes, for instance, rose 15 basis points, which was equivalent to a 50% increase in yield, as the market brought forward the expected path of increases in interest rates by the Fed. In several Latin American countries, inflation exceeded expectations and pushed some central banks, notably in Brazil and Mexico, to begin to hike interest rates. Foreign exchange volatility increased throughout Latin America. In this context, we added 4.2 million wireless subscribers in the second quarter, compared to a loss of nearly 5 million in the second quarter of 2020. With 1 million uh, subs, 1.1 million subs, Brazil accounted for half of the post emeritus of the quarter, followed by Austria with 289,000 and Peru with 234,000. Colombia was next with 159,000 subscribers. As for prepaid, net adds total 2 million subscribers, with Argentina accounting for 777,000, followed by Mexico with 432,000 and Brazil with 328,000. On the fixed line platform, we gain 128,000 broadband accesses, with Argentina and Colombia each contributing over 50,000 clients. Year on year, mobile postpaid exhibited the fastest access growth with 10.7%. Mobile prepaid followed suit with 5.6%, with fixed broadband coming in third with a 3.5% annual pace. Both fixed voice and pay TV declined slightly less than 3% year on year. Revenues totaled 253 billion pesos, slightly higher in nominal pesos than a year before. At constant exchange rates, the service revenue increased 5.3% year on year, and importantly, was up 1.8% on a sequential basis. It is to be noted that the second quarter of 2020 was the one in which the effects of the pandemic, both in terms of commercial activity and revenue, were more deeply felt, so the annual comparison may be somewhat misleading. But the first quarter of 2020 was largely free of the effects of the pandemic and happened to be a good reference. In the first quarter of this year, service revenue had risen 1.2% from the prior year. So service revenues and mobile service revenues are both greater than pre-pandemic levels. Prepaid and post-paid mobile service revenues are both at higher levels than they had prior to the pandemic, uh, with prepaid revenues surging on the strength of the economic expansion in Mexico, the U.S., Central America, Caribbean, and Eastern Europe. Prepaid revenues were up 9.5% and post-paid 4.4% year to year. As for the Fishland platform, Revenue of the different business lines has exceeded a smoother trend over the last several quarters, led by fixed broadband that has increased at levels of between 7 and 9 percent, and corporate networks that have recovered ground in the last two quarters. Pay TV and wireline boards are both showing improving trends. Second quarter EBITDA came in at 34.9 billion pesos, a 2.8 percent increase in nominal peso terms from the year earlier quarter. 
a constant exchange rate did increase 11.9 percent. However, adjusted, adjusted for the carry discounts obtained by Traxon in the second quarter of last year, EBITDA had an even stronger performance, increasing 14.6 percent. The EBITDA margin was 33.6 percent, which was a 0.8 percentage point uh, more than a year before, in spite of the greater commercial activity. Our operating profit increased 9.3 percent to 44.7 billion pesos. Depreciation and amortization charges held steady at 19 percent of service revenues, resulting, given the increase in EBITDA, in an operating profit that was up 17.9 percent at constant exchange rates on an annual basis and 6.2 percent quarter over quarter. Correcting for the carry discounts referred to before, the annual increase in our operating profit would have been 23.7 percent. We registered a net comprehensive income in the amount of 17.2 billion pesos as foreign exchange gains, 21.1 billion pesos, 21.1 billion pesos, uh, and gains in our financial expenses, which were 4.4 billion pesos, more than offset our net interest expense of, of 8.4 billion pesos. Our net pro profit total 42.8 billion pesos in the second quarter, more than doubling that of the year earlier quarter on the back of strong digital growth and our net comprehensive financing income. It was equivalent to 55 pesos cents per share or 54 dollars cents per year. In the six months to June, our operating cash flow allowed us to fund capital expenditures in the amount of 57.4 billion pesos Reduced net debt in the amount of 36.9 billion pesos, uh, which was uh, quite substantial, uh, certainly for the first half of the year, and buyback shares in the amount of 11 billion pesos, and also quite substantial. In addition, we reduced by 5.6 billion pesos our labor obligation. In fact, our share buybacks through June, which uh, amounted to 765.1 million shares, Top those ones of each of the last six years through the same period. Our free cash flow has exhibited a trend of strong growth, as you can see in the chart, for the last six years. It has been very steady, very consistent increase in free cash flow year after year for the last six years, increasing over 80% in dollar terms in the period. And finally, our net debt to the ratio uh, plunged. Uh, in this uh, quarter, and it stood at 1.64 times last 12 months EBITDA, down from 1.9 times a year before. So we have had the, the largest correction in, uh, in the net debt to EBITDA ratio that we have seen in uh, probably in, in, as ma in as many as 10 years. Uh, so with that, I would uh, like to, to uh, open this for Q&A and pass the floor back to Anil Hash. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. At this time, I would like to remind everyone, in order to ask a question, press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. We'll pause for just a moment to compile the Q&A roster. Your first question is from Marcelo Santos from J.P. Morgan. Your line is open. Hi, good morning. Thanks for taking my questions. I wanted to ask about broadband uh, in Brazil and in Mexico. So the first question related to Brazil is uh, you, you have been uh, losing subscribers in broadband, at least when we look at Anatel data until May. And we have seen many players in Brazil going to fiber, so new ISPs trying to list. We are seeing the, 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 the large, like, OA team, Vivo, creating these vehicles to invest in fiber. What are your plans in Brazil? How do you see this going? Do you plan to uh, invest yourself more in fiber, migrate maybe your cable network to fiber and what would be the impact on CapEx. And on Mexico, I just wanted you to comment a bit on the competitive environment because you also uh, saw some broadband losses in the quarter. So uh, if you could comment on that, it would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Marcelo. Uh, yes. Hi, Marcelo. Well, first talking about Brazil, uh, as you know, we, we, we have a uh, cable networks in Brazil. So what we've been doing is upgrading the network. So we, we have a very strong plan to 
to break down the nose in order to deliver more speed to our customers. When you look at the, uh, the new sales, 60% of the new sales is in a product that is 240 megabits, so we, we already prepared the network to do that. So we believe that uh, we will protect all the HFC uh, network. Uh, by the end of the year, we will upgrade 70% of the network to really deliver the, the speed that the market is needed. And secondly, talking about fiber to the home, uh, we already have 3 million home passes with fiber to the home. We opened 110 new cities with g technology in order to compete uh, uh, with fiber. And when you look at those cities, the 110 cities, the penetration that we are getting in those cities is quite, well, quite, quite relevant. And we have a problem to finish the year with around 5 million home passes with, uh, with g -Pon. And when you look at the figures, we are the leaders on uh, an ultra broadband in the marketplace. And now we are not only focused on, uh, on the speed that we, we need to deliver the speed that the market is needed and the competition is offering. But as you know, we are focused on the combo play that we add uh, Claro Box, uh, mobile, and that proposition has been working pretty good. And, and as you know, the ISPs are growing pretty rapidly, but in a region that we don't have network. When you look at the market share and where we have network, we even increase a little bit the market share. So that's, that's the plan uh, for Brazil. Uh, and in Mexico, when you look at the customer base, 43% of the internet base is already Zipon, and the rest is with BDSL. Just to give you a, a flavor, in, on the first half of the year, we built one million home passes uh, with fiber, and we migrate 500,000 uh, customers from copper to fiber. And we, we want we want to, to increase that uh, way, that path of construction and migration in Mexico. And as well in Mexico, the market has been receiving uh, well accepted the bundles that we are doing with the streamers uh, providers, as you know. We have bundles with Netflix, with uh, Disney Plus, and recently we launched with HBO Max. So we are we are uh, moving the customers to, to fire as well in Mexico. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your next your next question comes from the line of Leonardo Almost from UBS. Your line is open. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to discuss a bit the, the prepaid and postpaid uh, division between mobile clients. Notice a lot of, of prepaid net additions, except for Brazil, of course, had a lot of postpaid. But if you, if you can discuss how they see in the large countries or regions the, the prepaid and postpaid makes, how they see that playing out in 2021, considering that you, had a lot, you and the market had a lot of, of these connections prepaid last year to the, the pandemic. How do you see the prepaid playing out in the second half of 21? Thank you. Well, I, 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 we don't hear you so well. We don't know if you're talking about Mexico or Brazil, but uh, I can tell you that uh, in my view, as the pandemic, uh, since the pandemic starts, uh, a lot of people are using more and more and becoming more digital. And, uh, of course, uh, we have some disconnections uh, la last year in prepaid, or I can tell you that this year, today, we have more prepaid subscribers than what we had last year before the disconnection. So people start to reconnect again and start to use more. Our ARPU in Mexico, I'm talking about Mexico, uh, the ARPU in Mexico is uh, higher than the first quarter of, uh, of, uh, of last year. So people is using more, people is connecting and, uh, and, and using more uh, data. Uh, so that's more or less what, what I'm seeing. In the post phase, uh, people is still a little bit worried about the, the, the pandemic. They don't want to get uh, like uh, something uh, uh, like a bill every month. So that's why also some people is moving from post pays to PD pays, but uh, as we're seeing, they are using uh, a, a lot also data. So uh, in pre pays, 
and bus space all around Latin America will be in the same uh, 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 Any, anything else? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for hearing. That was my question exactly. Just a quick follow-up. Uh, besides Brazil and Mexico, that is discussed specifically, which other regions do you think there's more potential for prepaid growth, specifically prepaid growth? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, for the prepaid growth, in, uh, I think... Uh, uh, Colombia were growing in prepaid. All Central America were growing also in prepaid. The Dominican Republic were doing well. Uh, Eastern Europe also uh, uh, were growing in the prepaid side. So all, all overall, uh, people. So, so sometimes people doesn't want to have a commitment every month, but uh, uh, and, and they are uh, are moving to a prepaid platform. But we think that they are having good outputs and consuming well all the data. So it's uh, we're we're okay on that. That's very helpful. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Again, to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that's star 1 on your telephone keypad. Your next question is from Alejandro Galostra from BBVA. Your line is open. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for taking my question. Um, um, we have been um, significantly increasing the pace of uh, share buybacks in, in recent months, and even before reaching the desired level of, of leverage. So uh, should we expect an increased amount of capital distributions to shareholders uh, once you reach your, your 1.5 times net debt EBITDA and complete the sale of, of, uh, of Verizon, um, or, or, or you're already um, uh, reaching your, your levels of or your desired levels of, uh, of capital distributions to shareholders. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think what, what uh, I mentioned uh, in the overview uh, a moment ago was that we had uh, actually very good cash flow uh, in this first half of the year, and that allowed us to pay nearly $2 billion of, uh, of debt. The other would be regular cash from the operation. This is before getting uh, any of the proceeds from the uh, platform uh, or, uh, you know, whatever we might end up uh, having with the towers. So I think that uh, that, that uh, gave us uh, confidence that uh, we were very much uh, on track uh, to get to our desired levels. We didn't need to, to wait all that longer. So I think that we that, that's a little bit depending on the company today. Uh, we will be reaching our, our levels. Uh, we were confident that the uh, two things I, I mentioned, uh, both uh, platform and, and uh, the towers, uh, are uh, still on track to close this year. Uh, and uh, with that, I think that we, you know, maintaining a good cash flow allows us to uh, face the, uh, the share buybacks to very good cash flow. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Your next question is from Carlos Legareta from GVM. Your line is open. Hi, thank you. Good morning. Um, I have two questions, if I may. Uh, the first one regarding CapEx, we see that in the first six months of 2021, it's actually down versus the last year. Does this imply that it will pick up significantly during the second half, or has something changed there? And, and, and the second one, in terms of regulation in Mexico, uh, there's been a public consultation regarding the potential wholesale deregulation for rates uh, for Telmex in certain municipalities. So I'd like to understand if this can lead to um, perhaps the authorities uh, granting Telmex a pay TV license in those areas. Thank you. Well, on, on, on the CapEx side, uh, uh, we have our budget of uh, uh, 8 billion, uh, 5 percent more, 5 percent less. So we're in, in that range and uh, we are on track uh, for the first six months. We are uh, 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 on budget and uh, we're not increasing 
uh, anything else. Uh, what uh, Oscar says about uh, fiber to the home in Brazil, fiber to the home in Mexico, we have also a lot of fiber to the home all around Latin America. Everything is in, in including uh, in this budget. So that's uh, more or less. And on Telmex, uh, uh, you know, on pay TV, uh, I hope we can get it. Uh, yeah, there's uh, a lot of time that uh, the IFT is saying uh, 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 that it's going to give us the, the, the TV. So I, I hope that uh, we can have the TV in Telmex for this year. So. As we said always, uh, there's maybe not, not in the world there's a, a company, a, a phone company that doesn't have a pay TV license. Uh, I hope that uh, we can get that pay TV license uh, uh, this year. Do you think it's reasonable to think that those processes are related or not necessarily? Uh, I, uh, I, I, I don't think so. I don't, not necessarily is related to that. Uh, 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 we have been having that uh, 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 the, the pay TV for maybe 10 years. Now we're asking for the pay TV yes. for more than that. So I hope uh, this year we can get it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Your next question is from Arturo, Arturo Langa from ETAL. Your line is open. Hi, good, good morning. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, just one, I, I wanted to uh, see if you can provide any more color regarding Colombia and what you're seeing there uh, from the launch of one's operation. Just to get a sense, how aggressive do you perceive them to be right now? And what are what is the base case that we should be working with? Should we expect something like when AT&T went into Mexico, or maybe when one came into Chile, is that, uh, or when Intel came into Peru, is that your, like your, your working assumption, or do you expect something much, uh, much less aggressive? That would be very uh, helpful. I, Thank you. I, I cannot compare uh, the, what they do at and in Mexico or the other ones in Chile, in Chile or in Peru. Uh, so what I think one today in Colombia is very aggressive. Uh, the, their, brands, their plants are very aggressive. Uh, but I think not, it's not only aggressiveness. No? You need to have a good network, a good branding. Uh, we have what play, uh, convergence. Uh, customer care centers, good distribution networks. So there's a lot of things uh, 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 around uh, a good offer, okay? And customers, we have a very good MPS uh, in Colombia. People prefer us. So, uh, of course, there's a, a strong competition there. There's uh, three other big competitors, one, Telefonica, and the Vivo, uh, but uh, we feel comfortable. We're investing there in the network. We're having good uh, quality there, and uh, the convergence is very important for us. We have been putting a lot uh, of uh, of our subscribers in in, in for play. So, uh, of, uh, what can I say? So it's a big competition. It's a strong competition. Uh, good competitors, we're competing at, uh, against good competitors, but uh, we feel that we're in a good position in Colombia. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks. There are no further questions at this time. I will now turn the call over back to Mr. Daniel Hash for final remarks. Okay, well, so it was a a short uh, call. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you want to add something, Carlos, or okay. no. No, no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This concludes today's conference call. You may now disconnect. Perfect.